In this video, I'm going to compare building iOS apps with Swift UI and UIKit. Now, there are lots of subjective ways you can compare these two, but I'm not going to get into that here. Instead, I'll compare them in the only way that's really fair. I'm going to build the same app twice, once in Swift UI and once in UIKit. I'll do it side by side on the same screen so you can see exactly how they progress. Don't worry, I'll speed up the video by 300% so it isn't too dull. The app we're going to build is called High Life, an app that presents a storefront for buying starships so you can cruise around the galaxy in style. It has three milestones, and I'll point these out as we progress in the video. Milestone one is creating a table view controller with the list of starships that are for sale. Milestone two is creating and presenting a detailed view controller that shows a long description of the selected starship and a buy button. And milestone three is making the buy button work by simply showing an alert when it's tapped. Now, before I start, I want to say there are three rules we'll be sticking to in this video. First, I'm not trying to make the two apps perfectly identical. UIKit and SwiftUI are different frameworks, so we need to give them a little bit of leeway. Second, to make things fair, I'll be doing almost all the UIKit layout in code. There's a small exception to this, but I'll explain along the way. And finally, at no point will I be taking cheap digs at UIKit. I have a massive amount of love for UIKit. I've been doing it for a decade now, and it's going nowhere. In fact, we just saw a ton of great new features announced at WWDC. Instead, I'm here for the facts. How long did it take to build both apps, and how many lines of code were required? Okay, that's the intro done, let's get to work. So here we are on the Welcome to Xcode screen for both projects. On your left is UIKit, and on your right is SwiftUI. As a reminder, they're both going to make the same project, High Life, a, a Starship purchasing app. Uh, and they both do the same thing at 300% speed, so very, very fast, from scratch. So you can see exactly how it all breaks down. Anyway, it's going to fly by very quickly. I'll pause at key places to discuss various milestones. Let's get started. I'll press play now and we'll see how it goes. So they both start by creating a new project. Of course they do. They're going to drag in their assets, which is basically a load of pictures of starships and some JSON describing them all. In the UI kit version, I then go to a storyboard. Now I know I said they're both working programmatically, but that initial view controller, the first table view controller is best done in UI kit as a storyboard file. It's much, much faster, you know, making a prototype cell, registering it and so forth, giving it a name, defining its style and so forth. In the meantime, SwiftUI is cracked on by defining an extension to bundle that decodes JSON from the bundle, which now UIKit is also doing. There's a little helper method I use all the time to make bundle JSON much easier. And now SwiftUI has gone to the next thing, which is defining how a starship looks, what its name is, what its length, width, height, cost, description are, and so forth. And it even defines two computer properties. What's the formatted cost of the ship? i.e. its cost with commas in, also its formatted size, its length, its width, and its height as a single string. And now, switch your eyes onto the layout. It's only about a little bit ahead of a UI kit at this point. It loads the JSON from its bundle using that help we just made, and then it gets busy defining its navigation view plus a list. Inside there is going to be the image of the starship name, backed up by some border color and so forth, and a vStack for its title and cost. In UIKit land, you can see we're also now doing code. We're saying, give us large titles. Here's our high life and our title bar and so forth. And we're doing number rows and section and so forth. So if UI at this point has launched the simulator, it's feeling confident. And boom, there we go at five minutes, about nine seconds or so. So if UI's hit its first milestone, it's created a table view, scrolls around, showing pictures of various purchasable starships with title and cost below it. In a navigation bar with the words High Life, the app name, at the top. That's the first milestone. It's there at about five minutes and nine seconds or so. Go take a few seconds. UI kit, to be fair, isn't far off. You can see it's right now loading its image use image. It's just doing a, a DQ to cell correctly. It'll now draw a little gray border around this uh, image and so forth. It's only a, a little bit behind. Let's spin on. So now SwiftUI goes to the second screen, a starship view, while UIKit is still doing image view, layer, border width, and border color. So you can see uh, SwiftUI is doing a V stack of image ship name, text ship name, and so forth, just whizzing through all that data. 
At this point, which is what, 6.07 or so, give take a few seconds, UIKit has now also hit milestone one. You can see that same table of data, Serenity, Red Dwarf, Enterprise, and so forth, listing down in a table view, looking good. Let's spin on. So it's UI is now doing the, the buy button. Uh, it's put a little comment in there saying buy the ship, we'll come back to that later on perhaps. Add a bit of padding around it, giving it a custom uh, light purple background color and so forth. Uh, UI kit is now doing did select row at to push to its new view controller. Uh, so at this point we have Swift UI uh, is now doing a bit of extra work and actually pause it here to explain what it's doing because this is not required. In fact, it's a bit, uh, a bit of a cheat really. Um, I'm, I'm giving Swift UI some extra work. Uh, I'm making Swift UI do things that aren't required. Uh, it is loading the Starship's JSON file. Actually, it's doing a H there because I made a slight typo, but I'm not sure I'll correct it in a second. Um, it's loading its JSON data into the preview for the Starship's view. Now, this is not required. Okay, I'm adding extra time here to Swift UI realistically, but I think those little Xcode previews are extremely valuable for fast development. So it's worth taking the time to really customize those previews and make them look good. Anyway, let's spin on. So this is, uh, Swift UI is still customizing the layout and it'll mean we see a real layout. Boom, there you go. So see Swift UI, you can see already, has now got the second screen looking nice right there inside Xcode. And that's that Swift UI preview that we're just customizing. Not required, but it does really, really help make things look good. At this point, uh, 748, you can see uh, the Swift UI layout looks kind of right. You know, it's got uh, tech, uh, title uh, and then the size of the thing and description and then the buy button. But if you look, uh, you can see the, uh, the description text goes edge to edge of the phone, right? It doesn't have any padding on the sides of it. It doesn't look great. Now, uh, UI kit have the same problem shortly. Uh, this poor coder hasn't hit that problem yet. Um, but in Swift UI, uh, as you can see right now, I've gone to the ship description and text thing where it says line limit nil, I'm gonna add directly below dot padding. Add some padding here, please. And that's all it takes to fix it in Swift UI. So I'll press play, let it spin on. There's the padding, looks much better. Then we add a navigation button so we can push to that view from the first screen. At this point, UI kit is going through stack views, uh, making things look nice, pin a stack view to all possible edges, which isn't great. At this point, by the way, Oh, 8.30 or so, a, a, bit, a bit slow there, sorry. Uh, the Swift UI version has now really finished Milestone 2. It's made that detail screen look fantastic, out of the box, which is great. Uh, UI kit, as you can see, is doing stack view, trailing anchor, and straight equal to, yada, yada, yada. Lots of auto layout code to make the stack view pin to the top leading and trailing edges and more. Let's spin on. Uh, Swift UI now is onto the third milestone, presenting an alert when you buy a ship. So it's doing that now, it's saying, you know, it's yours and so forth, while uh, UIKit is modifying alignment of text and so forth. Boom, okay, at this point, I don't know, 9.25, give or take 10 seconds or so, uh, Swift UI has now finished. That milestone is now complete, the third milestone. It's had the table view, the first milestone, it's got a detail view, the second milestone, and now made an alert saying it's now yours, that's a third milestone. So at about 9.25 or so, I'll, know, I'll look afterwards how the exact time was, Swift UI is done. UI kit is still configuring a UI label with preferred font size and so forth for its side. Let's spin on and see how UI, UI kit gets on. So you can see it's modifying the label here. Uh, it is uh, making the right font for it and so forth. Give you the right color, of course it is. Uh, and then adding description text, making that have number of lines zero and so forth. Lots of code, lots of boilerplate code to do fairly uh, basic things in Swift UI. It's gonna add a target to the buy ship method, which is gonna be implemented as a, as a sort of empty method for now, just so the code compiles, so we can hit that second milestone. There's our custom background color again, that sort of uh, purplish color. Adds a custom font. And there, this by the way, uh, content edge inset, I'll just pause there for a second. Uh, oops, let's get rid of the code completion. Is how we do uh, bigger buttons in UI kit. We add a bit of padding around the button so it's more clear what's going on. It's been on. So now we're to the important bit. We're saying to the stack view, add the image, then the name, then the size, then the description, then the buy button. And finally, uh, add a little bit of spacing here and there to make the whole thing look nicer, more or less matching the Swift UI version. 
an empty buy ship method so it looks correct. And at this point, boom, we have the second milestone in UIKit. So you can see we have uh, Serenity appearing on the screen nice and clearly. Again, it hits the same problem Swift UIKit. That text is going edge to edge inside the uh, phone. Doesn't look great. But there's now a bonus problem. The buy button also goes edge to edge. Now in, in UIKit, when you face this problem, you nearly always first Google it, <laughs> second cry in despair as you realize there is no easy fix. Uh, the most common thing to do here is a subclass UI label to handle DrawRect yourself. You add padding around it um, by hand. And that's a really great, really flexible solution. Here though, that's more trouble than it's worth. That's more work than I want to do in the amount of time I have to get, to get a fair time for UIKit. So we, we do a simpler version. It's not really flexible in the long term, but it's good enough here, which is we're gonna wrap the UI label inside a container view, a wrapper view, and then attach constraints to the label. So it's leading and trailing uh, left and right edges have 20 points of space in from that view. So when a stack view places its wrapper view, it'll go edge to edge, and the label inside that will be squeezed in slightly. It'll be 40 points less wide on either side. And the same thing for the buy button as well. Let's spin on. So here we go, making description wrapper, that's the UI view. Turning TAMIC off, that's translate auto-tizing mask into constraints. We then make custom constraints for our description. Our top anchor uh, is gonna match the uh, wrapper top anchor and bottom anchor is the wrapper top bottom anchor. But the leading and trailing are 20 in on either edge, causing that little bit of padding from its parent view. Once that's done, we do the same thing for the buy button, because that has the same fix. So we had a buy wrapper that uh, does the same thing. We add the buy button to that, turn off TAMIC for the buy button, add constraints by hand. Again, top and bottom are gonna be uh, fixed as zero, but this time we'll add a center X anchor so the button stays in the middle and adapt its width based on the amount of text inside it. It's a much nicer way of working. Uh, and finally, it should all work. Boom, here's the final version. So now you can see we have the Solaco. Uh, there's the text padding on the left and right edge correctly, and the button's now its natural width rather than being stretched to be edge to edge. It looks much, much nicer. So UIKit now has hit its second milestone at about 16 minutes or so. Let's spin on. The final milestone, of course, is the show on alert, which is trivial in UIKit. Make a new UI alert controller, uh, add some text to it, make a new UI alert action with an OK button inside, and then call present on that. And that's all just gonna wire up straight away. And that's the end. So at about 16.50 or so, I'll tell you the exact time in just a minute, UIKit has finished. Uh, and this is a fairly traditional app for UIKit, nothing too fancy here, but there's a significant difference in time, I think. Even without exact times, you can see UIKit took a lot longer to finish and took more code as well. Anyway, let's look at the details. So it took me nine minutes, 25 seconds to build the app using Swift UI versus 16 minutes, 46 seconds to do the same thing using UIKit. UIKit wasn't twice as long, but it wasn't far off, maybe 80% or so. But speed isn't everything. Did UIKit take more or less code than Swift UI? Let's find out. If we subtract the two files that are identical in both projects, that's the Starship struct and my JSON bundle helper extension, then remove all comments and white space, the UIKit program was 98 lines of code. That's not bad, although if you recall, I did take a small shortcut by doing some of the work in the storyboard. But in comparison, the Swift UI version was 52 lines of code, just over half the size. So Swift UI was significantly faster to make and took a lot less code. I think it's pretty clear it's done very well here. Even better, that same code can now be ported to Apple's other platforms. Before I'm done, I want to add one important note of caution. Please remember, there is no silver bullet in programming. Yes, Swift UI is quite brilliant in so many things, but UIKit will still be around for a long time yet, and is still getting amazing new features from Apple. So if you want to get a job today, or indeed any time in at least the next year, if not 18 months or two years, you still need to learn UIKit. And that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel. I make lots of videos to help you improve your skills as a Swift developer.